of the one which we have a picture of, which will come up soon, is the Iberian or Spanish Samodromus, which is a, a common lizard found here. It's, it's about um, six inches, um, has a long tail, mm -hmm. and there we have a picture. A beautiful lizard, again, not as big as the jeweled lizard, but a distinctive and interesting lizard nevertheless, and certainly a lizard that you will be able to spot in the El Torcal area. Okay then, and uh, of course vipers as well, you'll be able to see, won't you? Of course, I mean, yeah. um, the Latastes viper is the most venomous viper um, found in this region, and it is another um, species that is um, endemic to the area of El Torcal. If you see one of these day, snakes basking on the rocks, steer clear. <laughs> um, if, you get, if you're unlucky enough to get bitten by this snake, then you need to read my book. Okay, <laughs> and that will tell you what to do. Um, or if you have been bitten by this snake, you might not want to read the book because you will be in a state of shock and a bit of delirium. Get somebody Perhaps else to with, get somebody yes. else to read it, and, yeah. and they'll be able to perform the first aid that is necessary, and um, so that you can get to a clinic and get help. That okay. is yeah. now an interesting uh, name is the uh, whip snake. You said can be found in El Torcal as well. Yes, the whip snake, um, or, or the horseshoe whip snake in this case, is a common snake for this region but it's one of my favorites it's it's a very beautiful snake it's non-venomous so completely harmless um, and a lot of the time um, it is found um, in people's gardens and houses in fact uh, my neighbor came rushing to me the other day and he said there's this huge snake in my car and we opened up his car and uh, sure enough there was this uh, large adult whip snake curled around his engine which, um, Keeping nice and uh, yes, warm. Which, uh, which I removed <laughs> for him and he was so <laughs> thankful for that. Um, but yes, a, a beautiful snake that is um, quite common and easily spotted. Okay, and uh, something, um, I don't really know what it is, but uh, it's listed as the uh, Solifugid. Yes, that's absolutely right. Now, the Solifugid is a very interesting arachnid. It's also called a sun spider, and in Arabian countries it's called a camel spider, and that's because it's rumoured to bite the lips of camels while they are drinking water, causing instant death. Mm. Now, the Solifugid is in fact um, not a spider, um, but it is not venomous either. It, it possesses no venom glands whatsoever, but it does have the most powerful jaws of any arachnid in the world. Now, I do have a specimen of this rare arachnid. It's very fast moving, Karen. Do you want me to get it out? No. <laughs> right, now there's the specimen. Okay, now it's very small and that's why I've brought in a picture so that our viewers can see what the, the animal looks like, which mm. we've just seen. But that's how big it is. It's, it's a very small arachnid. Okay. It's, it's about an inch, inch and a half, but a very interesting arachnid nevertheless. Mm. They're usually found in Africa and Arabian countries, um, but we have a species that is found here called Gluria dorsalis. And uh, this specimen is also found in the El Torcal area. They're only found in very dry areas. Areas mm. and desert areas. It is found in the Tabernas um, of Almeria because that is a European desert and it's also found here. Okay, now um, we do have a close up of the awful wool spider that uh, mm -hmm. was um, running around the desk earlier on and perhaps we should have a little look at that. There we go. Oh, yeah. Just to look how, in my opinion, how awful and aggressive <laughs> it looks. <laughs> and that was running around near me. That's <laughs> right. And, and here we have a beautiful female and you can see the bright red shalichra or the fangs, um, which it displays um, the aposematic coloration warning predators that don't mess with me. This is a poisonous spider. And this female, you can just see behind it, if you look closely, it's guarding an egg sac. And wolf spiders guard an egg sac in a shallow retreat. And when the babies hatch out, they climb onto the mother's back. Right. And she carries them around until they are able to fend for themselves and hunt for themselves, and then they disperse. Okay, mm. to breed even further. Mm -hmm. That's um, right. Now, I've noticed something that's been catching my eye mm -hmm. on the desk over there. Um, and it's a beautiful, it looks amber to me, a beautiful right. uh, yes. stone. Here we have, um, it is amber, well spotted there, Karen. And here we have a beautiful nugget of amber. Now, um, amber is very interesting because when animals become extinct, they become fossilized. Uh -huh. And we can only study them because of the reminiscence that, of the animal that is left in, in rock, so it's usually a, a kind of a, um, an outline of the animal that is left. But that's it. Now the wonderful thing about amber is, amber is sap that comes from a tree, and in prehistoric times this sap 
that run from trees trapped insects. And over centuries, this umber became extremely hard and um, the, the sap became extremely hard and turned into this amber. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing about this is that it retains the animal that may be hundreds of millions of years old intact. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly as it would have been when it died. Right. And that's why scientists have been able to extract DNA of dinosaurs from mosquitoes trapped inside amber. My goodness, mm -hmm. really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that would make another good programme, well, talking it, about things like that. Well, yes, <laughs> and that was the, uh, the inspiration behind Jurassic Park.